the, the, next, the next stop on our tour is workflow. Workflow is a big one. Um, you know, I, I've, I'm shooting the tapeless. I don't have a tape. How can I be sure that I'm going to get my stuff off? That's a fair question. Okay? We're moving out of standard definition and into high definition. We're moving away from tapes and into hard drives and memory cards. So what does that mean to you, the shooter, the, the guy who hopes he's going to have some media to turn into his client at the end of the day? Well, number one, I can tell you, uh, we've rented a lot of EX cameras and we've sold a lot of EX cameras. And we have not had one, we have not had one S by S card fail on us. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. But um, so show me, don't tell me, right? How do I get my media off of the S by S card? There are a couple of ways. First, you'll notice you can get a USB cable into the camera connected right to the computer. Simple. Second, there's a little accessory you can buy from Sony. It's a USB media reader. So into your Macintosh or your PC, whatever you're using, USB connection, and it's a drive that accepts S by S cards. You just slide it right into the USB reader, and it's connected to the computer like a, desk, like a, like a hard drive. Third, if you have one of the old new Mac laptops, they come with an express port, which allows you to slide a card right into the computer. Just like this. All right. I'm just going to show you. Here's my Mac. Now, untitled, right? It, it popped up right here. Let me get my mouse over there. Here it is. But what is that S by S card? You know, what, what, uh, what are we looking at here? Is it really a hard drive? Well, you notice it's got this BPAV folder. Let's dig a little deeper. That's a, don't dig any deeper, all right? But just, just, for, just for the sake of uh, experimentation here, let's dig a little deeper. What have we got in the BPAV folder? A bunch of old other folders. We got a clip menu. We got some MXF files. We got some clip files. Listen, don't go any deeper than the BPAV folder, all right? The way to maintain your data is to take this BPAV folder and make a copy of it on your hard drive. I, right now, do not have a external hard drive connected to my Macintosh, so I'm just going to be working on the hard drive. So what I'm going to do is on my desktop, I'm going to File, New Folder, and I'm going to call it something descriptive, not just card one, not just card two. I'm going to name a container folder that's going to take all of the clips off of my S by S card and put them on my hard drive. Maybe I'm uh, shooting at a webinar, and the webinar is called Tips and Tricks. So I'll call it Tips and Tricks card one, yeah? Tips and Tricks card one. There we are. Now I will take the BPAV folder from my untitled S by S card, drag it over to my tips and tricks folder, and voila, all my clips have been copied over. You can open up tips and tricks now. You'll see that there's a BPAV folder, and it has the same mishmash of clips and XML files and the kinds of things that you do not want to touch. You don't want to rename them. You don't want to mess with them. It's important to have a BPAV folder named, right? And um, I like to put it in a containing folder just so that I know which clip it was. So now I've safely got an exact copy of my S by S card. I can eject it. You have to eject it. Oh, yeah. Don't just pull it out of your computer without ejecting. So I have a like busted. <laughs> busted. <laughs> All right. OK. Well, luckily, we made a copy of it now that I've ruined it. Now I could stick it back in the camera, format my media, which you've already seen, right? And then just go right back on using my complete 8 gig S by S card. Question from the. You know, the uh, Apple. How about uh, on a PC? On a PC, a great question. On a PC, I would make a folder called Tips and Tricks EX1. I would use the USB memory reader, right? Or just connect my camera with a USB cable. I would copy the BPAV folder out of the card into Tips and Tricks card one and be done with it. Exact same, the exact same process for PC or for Mac. The difference is which programs you're going to use to open it. Now I can open up XDCAM transfer out of the Final Cut Pro plugin if I'm on a Mac. And it will see, I can point to this Tips and Tricks folder just like I could point to the card itself. It'll be an exact duplicate. Because I haven't renamed the BPAV folder, because I haven't gone inside and messed with the innards of it, it will be just dead on exact duplicate. 
If I was on a PC, maybe I'm on, what is it, Adobe Premiere or the XDCAM clip browser, the same thing. You could either point to the card connected with a USB cable, or you could point to the folder that you made, the exact duplicate of the BPAV folder, and those images will show up. I'm not going to bore you with that stuff. I know you guys trust me. Um, that's just how it happens. That's how it happens. We're going to take just like a real quick short break to allow me to turn the air conditioner on, cool us all down for a little bit. And while that's going on, um, we've got something prepared for you to share another great aspect of the PMW EX3 and all the other Sony cameras. It's the extended warranty feature. Maybe you've seen this video, maybe you haven't. But um, do we have this, Virg? Yes, we do. All right. Welcome, Midtown Video Web Servers. I'm Jesse Miller. And I am Bearded Evil Jesse. And we're here to talk to you today about Sony's extended warranty program, which extends coverage from one year to three years on any HD camera with a list price under $10,000. That's your PMW EX3, your EX1, your HVRZ7. Put it this way let's say you walk into Midtown Video and you buy yourself a nice new HD camera. Would you like an extended warranty with that for only $159.99? What my friend is trying to tell you is that for 160 bucks, you can ensure the value of your $10,000 purchase. Now, there are two ways of looking at it. On the one hand, you've already spent close to $10,000. On the other hand, what's a couple extra bucks? Again, what he means by that is, by spending an extra $160 at the time of purchase, you're preventing potentially costly repair in years two and three in the life of your camera. Yeah, but not everything's covered. Like this one time, I made an awesome Ziploc underwater housing for my camera, and it got damaged, and Sony wouldn't repair it under warranty. Well, good point. Negligence, including water damage, are expressly prohibited from warranty coverage. All right, well, what about this other time when I needed to get my heads clean, and I sent it into Sony, and they wouldn't cover it under warranty? Well, that's true. Normal wear and tear is also outside the scope of warranty coverage. What is covered, though, is any problem arising out of the normal use of your camera. You're extending the umbrella from one year to three years, protecting you against what could rightly be considered Sony's responsibility. Oh, you mean like premature electrical or mechanic malfunction? Yes, premature malfunction. You know, parts going bad, anything that goes wrong that isn't due to wear and tear or negligence. All right, so let's say I buy your warranty. What are the actual benefits? Well, apart from covering the cost of parts, labor, and return shipping from the repair facility, Sony offers a toll-free phone number for repair support and also priority turnaround time at the Sony authorized repair facility. So by priority turnaround time, you mean I get to jump people in line? Well, that's right. Extended warranty customers can jump non-warranty repairs in line. Listen, Sony makes great cameras. That's why they send each one out with a one-year warranty. But some camera owners like the added comfort of an extended warranty program. So I guess you just have to ask yourself one question. Do you feel lucky? Punk?